We're back with the power panel, Marika, Marty, Paul, and Katie. Ontario Premier Doug Ford hits his 100 days in office mark this weekend. How would you describe the first 100 days? Marika, I'm of course going to start with you because you are there day in and day. I think you spent each of those 100 days there covering it. I know, I it. feel like it's been like 100 years, but <laughs> anyways. Okay, so how would you characterize them? Um, I would say it's actually been very successful for the Premier. He's he's kept Conservatives very happy with what he's done and he's knocked off a lot of at least the easier promises to make that keeps his base happy, that rallies the base and that lays the groundwork for what's next. The I think the tricky part for him is that what's next is a whole lot of work, especially with the $15 billion deficit. So. I think he's had a very good first 100 years, 100, you did very it. good first 100 days, um, but I think that the real test is what's next. Paul, what do you think? What's your impression? I, I think that he's often been, uh, I don't know if the term is premierial, he's often been quite prime ministerial. He's um, uh, tried to be very constructive on the NAFTA file, for instance. Uh, he was at the National Arts Centre Tuxedo Gala the other night, hobnobbing with the swells. Uh, he, uh, and he was uh, saved by the fates for making his biggest mistake, which was invoking the notwithstanding clause to meddle in uh, what's essentially his, his family dispute with certain Toronto councillors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th the uh, Conservatives I know were, were, were breathing a sigh of relief that he didn't have to go down that path because it would have gotten him further into seem, seeming obsessed with Toronto, where his voters aren't, uh, with seeming obsessed with the past instead of the future, uh, and, and with um, um, uh, you know, breaking the system to some extent to uh, achieve his ends. Uh, but in a lot of ways, he's, he, the biggest surprise, and it's happened quite a bit, is that very often he seems like a premier like the others, uh, instead of like some guy who comes in you know, just to break stuff. Like his brother. Okay. <laughs> Katie, you have covered the Fords. I have. You, you did. I remember you very well doing that. I think all of Canada does. <laughs> I, what, are, what are your insights? I would say this is going a heck, a, lot, a heck of a lot different than Toronto City Hall was, but of course there's a, there's a completely different uh, dynamic at play there. Rob Ford is a very different politician than Doug Ford was. Uh, Rob Ford very much uh, knew the system. Uh, and although they had, they got a f they actually got some stuff down at Toronto City Hall. There are some. There's a, obviously a, a, a lasting legacy there that is not the one that the family had wanted. Obviously, we don't need to get into that. Uh, but um, in term, I would say I would argue that it, it's going better than it went at Toronto City Hall. Um, uh, he made promises to voters. The one thing it will be hard to do, though, is to sort of compare. You know, you don't have the same sort of you know prom because of the campaign, the way it unfolded. You don't have the same sort of platform documented from the Conservatives moving forward uh, during that election uh, yeah. because it was so frantic. And so you can't really yeah. compare, okay, we said we were going to do this and we did do that. That's why things are kind of vague. So when Doug Ford says, I said I wanted to make government more efficient and I'm going to come in and slash city council. Well, he didn't say that specifically. He made a general promise and now he can pick and choose what he wants to sort of say. Um, but uh, he's, he's following through on some of the things that he promised and he did win that overwhelming majority. So uh, the, the people that don't like him. He's he's kind of very similar to Justin Trudeau in that he's the kind of guy that when you look at him, it, it invokes an emotional reaction. The people on the left don't like him. The mm -hmm. people on the right are just like, this is the guy that's... Uh, they, they might not like him a lot, but you know, he's he he's going to do what he said he... He's going to try and do what he said he did. So, um, hmm. it's... it's I, I would say it's going to be... Uh, it'll be I think the next sort of phase of how this goes and when there is more work to do and, and, and it's not just, you know, pulling off those first instant kind of wins mm -hmm. we'll see if it continues to go well anything you can draw for the new premier in your in your province marty uh look the, the, we we call our, our current uh our new premier uh francois Legault. we call him conservative here's a guy who likes eight dollar a day daycare uh, right across the board not means tested so regardless of how much money you make you get eight dollars a day daycare essentially eight dollars and five cents uh, to be precise uh, uh, Quebec is one of the few large provinces now that has a uh, has a uh, plan on carbon as a um, as in the carbon market uh, we're not really all per that particularly conservative and you know during the debates <coughs> here in Quebec uh, Doug Ford was sort of bandied about as uh, as a bad word uh, and uh, you know as, as sort of like Trump Jr. and that kind of thing. It was very very facile and that kind of thing. But all this to say is that uh, uh, the two are very separate, are very very different um, in those regards. They're similar, I would say, on identity issues, uh, somewhat. 
Uh, Francois Legault is going very, very big on uh, the idea of immigration and, uh, you know, cutting immigration rates and uh, talking a lot about, um, you know, so the, the imposition of religious minorities on our culture, probably more than Doug Ford will. Uh, but all is to say is I think they sort of see eye to eye on that sort of thing. I just have about a minute left. So quickly uh, around what's the biggest challenge in the, ne in the next at least 100 days for the Ford government? Marika? It's going to be the fall economic update leading into the budget, but certainly all eyes are on that fall economic update because that's the first chance we see of just how much they will cut and how fast they're going to move. Yeah, all the stuff that they haven't really told us the mm -hmm. details on, right? Exactly. Katie, what do you think? I, I, I agree. I think that um, it's going to be, whenever they announce what cuts they're going to be making in Ontario, it's what kind of backlashes they're going to be, and are they going to bite off more than they can chew in terms of handling the backlash? Paul? Um, the worst temptation for them is this... Um, uh, you know, these show trials against the Liberals for having uh, run deficits and stuff like that. Um, uh, the voters punished the Liberals just as hard as they could. They will continue to uh, remember the bad old days every time a Liberal speaks. They don't need the Premier's help. And when the Premier uh, carries out these grudge matches, it's a little bit like with, uh, with, with Toronto City Council. It doesn't seem very forward-thinking. And Marty, final word to you. What are you watching over the next 100 days? Biggest challenge for them? If you'd asked me 100 days ago, it would have been uh, Doug Ford trying to hang on to the sort of blue-blooded progressive conservative types that are in his caucus and in his, in his, uh, in his cabinet. Uh, he has done a remarkable job of doing just that. Uh, and I think now that the bloodletting is about to begin, these are the progressive conservatives are the type that, that, uh, that can do this, specifically, you know, considering the fact that this is the government, uh, the progressive conservatives were Mike Harris that, that did this sort of thing back in the 90s. So uh, he's, in good, he's in good hands. Although I will say that every minister we've had on insists those cuts are not coming. We shall see. Thanks so much to the Power Panel, Marika Walsh, Katie Simpson, Paul Wells, and Marty Patrickwin.